Hey guys, it's Sakar, and today we're going to be going over my Magna K build for the Ascending Tide chapter. Uh, first of all, I really want to say thank you guys for being patient with me. I know it's been a long time since I've made any kind of video. It's been about like two months or so, which is a long hiatus for me. But I appreciate you guys being patient. But don't worry, it was worth the wait. I just kind of get that way towards the end of every chapter, where I just feel like I don't have any more builds that I really wanted to make. And I didn't want to come up with like stuff that I just made up that I didn't even know if worked or not. So I didn't want to give you guys a fake build, so that's why I kind of stopped making builds and stopped making videos. But we're back, new chapter, new possibilities, a bunch of new uh, sets, a bunch of new stuff like that. So I'm really excited to get into that uh, in the next few weeks. But this is the first one for now. We're going to be doing Mag DK. I'm really liking this so far, so I really hope you guys too. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's get started. First things first, let's look at our gear. Both of our monster set pieces are going to be heavy, and they're going to be blood spawn, and they're going to be reinforced with the prismatic enchants. And you know, every single piece of our body is going to be prismatic enchants. Just saying that right away. All my builds always are. You know, just saying. So blood spawn. That's going to give you uh, that stamina recovery. Then also, when you take damage, you have a six percent chance to gain thirteen ultimate. Increase your physical and spell resistance by thirty-seven, thirty-one for five seconds. So this is just free ulti gen. It's really good for sustain on the DK because you're just going to want to be ulting as often as possible. That way, you're just going to keep your um, your stats, not your stats, um, all your resources up as much as possible. Trust me, it is my favorite thing to use on a DK between this or Magma Incarna. I couldn't decide, but I just prefer Bloodspawn since my duo partner usually uses Magma. The chest piece is going to be Heavy Trainee in Reinforced. So Trainee is just like, we have an extra piece on this build, so just running this is going to increase our maximum health by 1454. And then our gloves are going to be Rallying Cry in Light. And Rallying Cry is a brand new set to this patch, which I have already fallen in love with. The two piece is Critical Chance, the three piece is Max Magic. The four piece is another Critical Chance, which I'm not a huge fan of the two and four piece, but the five piece makes up for it, trust me. The five piece, uh, while a battle spirit is active, critically healing yourself or an ally causes you and up to 11 other group members within 12 meters to gain 300 weapon and spell damage and 1650 critical resistance for 20 seconds. Each group member affected reduces the weapon and spell damage uh, by 15. Oh god, I moved it. It reduces that, but it reduces the weapon and spell damage by 15 and the critical resistance by 83. Um, and it could affect every uh, 15 seconds, but it, it, it procs very often where you don't need to worry about it. Uh, you can have it up all the time if you actually know how to proc it right. So I am usually in a two-man group, so this is only going to be affected where my weapon and spell damage is decreased by 15 and my critical resistance is decreased by 83, which is still a lot of free weapon and spell damage and a lot of free critical resistance. You get so tanky in this. I love it. So I'm really a big fan of this. It procs pretty often too, so I don't ever feel like I'm struggling to keep it up. Uh, it really, I, I'm really liking this so far. So that's why I'm making a build video right away with this. I'm really liking this. So Rallying Cry, Light Gloves. And it's also in the Divines trait because there's absolutely no reason, in my opinion, to run Impen on any of your body pieces with your critical resistance being increased that much. So trust me, just run Divines on this. We're going to get your uh, Mundus up as much as possible. You can either run that or run something like Well Fitted. I prefer Divines, that way I can hit harder. Rallying Cry Sash, uh, in, it's it's a light set, so it's going to be light, and it's also in Divines. Rallying Cry Breaches in Divines as well, and our boots are going to be Plague Break. Plague Break is still one of my absolute favorite sets in the game. Uh, it gives you Offensive Pen, uh, two lines of weapon and spell damage, so that's huge. And then the five piece is uh, basically you put a dot on somebody and if they purge or die with it with that dot on them, uh, they're going to blow up for a lot of damage. And the more people you have around them, the better. So I absolutely love this set. It's basically like a small scaler's version of Vicious Death. And everything about this set is just a small scaler's dream. I love it so much. So if you just want to fight outnumbered, I feel like this is a very good build for you. Plague Break is a very good outnumbered set, and Rallying Cry is a very good outnumbered set if you're in a small man group. So, you know, we're working on things. 
our necklace is going to be a play break amulet and it's going to be infused and I've got a reduced magic cost glyph on it because reduced magic cost is actually disgustingly OP on mag DK. I definitely recommend on every single DK build to run at least one of these. It's going to really help your sustain a lot, I promise. Um, and then our other ring is going to be Plague Break Ring with a Magic Recovery Glyph on it in the Swift Enchant. Or Swift Trait, sorry. Swift is going to allow us to be, you know, a little bit speedy, but we don't need all Swift since we have Celerity in our CP now. And then our Mythic is going to be Death Dealer's Fate uh, with the, in the Infused Trait with a Spell Damage Glyph. So Death Dealer is basically, to sum it up into uh, small terms, the longer you're in combat, the more magic, stamina, and health you're going to get. I think it's going to be increased by almost 3,000. So it, if you just get into a fight early and then just like sustain throughout the fight, you're getting a lot of max stats for this, and it's just really helpful. Um, it, something like this allows you to run buy stat food on a magic character so that you actually have a lot of stamina. So you don't really have to worry about running a... It, it really helps in a lot of different aspects running something like this. And it's my favorite mythic in the game right now. Um, and please, 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 please don't be in the comments like, Oh, what can I run instead of death dealers? Um, just go grind it out. Trust me. It works on a lot of builds and it's really good. And it's going to be good for at least another patch. So just get it out of the way. Trust me, it's worth it. Uh, it's my favorite it's my favorite mythic in the game right now. So trust me, just use this. And then our weapons are going to be double plague break swords, it, both in the charged enchant or charged traits. I keep on saying that. Oh my god. Double plague break swords is going to give us the most amount of uh, damage possible on this. Dual wield is just really good for that. And that's why we're using the swords. I'm not using maces because I'm going to be in corrosive a lot of the time, so I don't need any more penetration. So, using swords is just going to increase your spell damage, too. And then our back bar is going to be a Rallying Cry Resto Staff and the Defending Trait. Resto Staff on the back bar is so unbelievably meta nowadays. It's re it really helps you out so much. Your healing is outputted to insane amounts. I absolutely love it. And then, let's look at our skills, if I can find them. Uh -huh. Actually, you know what? Let's look at our character sheet first. So we're going to be a Breton on this build. Breton is, in my opinion, the best magic class in the game right now with the uh, reduced cost on it. That passive is absolutely broken since everybody's a DK. Or, sorry, DK. Since everybody's a vampire, uh, that will really offset the increased cost of vampire. So that's why I use Breton. And then also you get the recovery on Breton, so that's why I use that. Our attributes are going to be broken down to 47 magic and 17 health. And then our Mundus is going to be the Apprentice. Uh, the Apprentice with our four Divines pieces is going to increase our spell damage by 324. So that is pretty chunky. I like that. And then our uh, food is going to be Clockwork Citrus Filet. It's going to increase your max, ha max health and max magic. And it's also going to give you health recovery and magic recovery. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty huge. I love that. It's really expensive. But if you can afford it, I definitely recommend it. And then we're also going to be Vamp Stage 3 because I feel like every single build in the game for PvP at this point should be Vamp Stage 3 because it is absolutely broken. And there is definitely nothing wrong with it. And it definitely shouldn't be nerfed one of these patches, Zenimax. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, it's basically built-in Pariah if you use Vamp Stage 3. So you just really don't need to build tanky at all since you have this, which is why I have just two, basically, I, don't know, I, I really like it. I really like Vamp Stage 3. There's no reason not to run it. And then our skills are going to look like this on our front bar. We're going to have Flame Lash, which is going to be your main spammable once you actually have your dots on everybody. Um, Shattering Rocks, I like this morph better than the other one because there's no reason to have the other morph if because it's just going to keep them in place, which negates the effects of Burning Talons. So Shattering Rocks, you're going to get a nice heal for it too, which, you know, who doesn't like to be uh, healed and on every build or every ability? Um, Flames of Oblivion, this is going to be the other morph of Cauterize. So this is just, it really helps your damage out a lot. Um, it really just... 
I, I, I love it so much. Uh, it gives you free damage while you're just in the middle of combat. I just You don't even have to... You just have to apply it, and that's all you need to do. You don't need to aim it. You don't need to do anything. Just apply it. That's it. Burning Talons, you're just immobilizing enemies and just really being annoying to them. I love it. Between Talon spamming and then uh, Shattering Rock spamming people, I just love to be able to just absolutely troll people on this build. You just can lock them down so often. I, I think it's so funny. Uh, Burning Embers. I <laughs> Look, Burning Embers got buffed this patch. It's basically a dot and a hot at the same time. So you're healing, and they, so if you put this on multiple enemies... You're, you're getting a lot of healing, guys. So just, like, if you're getting hit by, like, three people and you put Burning Embers on all three of them real quick, guys, do you know how much healing that is? It's, it's kind of it's crazy. And then my favorite ultimate in the game, Corrosive. Oh, Lord, is this thing broken, but in the best ways. I love it. Uh, it reduces your incoming damage to 3%, so you're pretty damn tanky, too. But on top of that, you're going to be ignoring your enemy's direct, uh, physical and spell resistance for uh, direct damage. So things like Flame Lash, you're going to hit like an absolute truck on people. So you're just deleting people with this. I think it's the absolute best ultimate in the game right now. So definitely, definitely, definitely use this. I don't understand the mag DKs in this game that run anything besides corrosive. There's literally no reason to. It's the mag Magicka leap on a DK is awful. I, I feel like I use that and I heal people, heal the people I'm hitting. So, and standard is just so unreliable. Any player with a brain that you're fighting against with standard is just going to walk out of it. So just trust me, corrosive is so good please 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 use that on our back bar we're going to be using radiating regen uh so what i like about this morph over the other one is you're guaranteed to get this heal the other morph it is not guaranteed whether you're going to get it or not plus you get to heal your friends too so i'm saying that i'm always in a two-man group so because you know two man is better than solo so you know using this you can help out your teammate a lot and it's really 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 just a good heal to have, and you only have to apply it once every 10 seconds, too. So, huge. Pog. Race can sign. This is your snare removal. So, Pog. Uh, you And plus, you get to go fast. <laughs> I don't really think anything else needs to be said on that. Engulfing Flames. You want to start every fight with Engulfing Flames because that's going to uh, increase your flame damage for, you know, the rest of, uh, like, while it's active. So, definitely, uh, you know, Keep that on your enemies at all times. Plus, it's a decent amount of damage, too. So, Pog. Coagulating Blood. Uh, this is only, like, your oh-no heal. Like, if you're taking too much damage, that's when you use Coag. But if you're applying Radiating Regen constantly, and if you're also applying Burning Embers constantly, I don't really think you need to hit it too often in a fight. Unless you're getting, like, really Zerg down. And then Volatile Armor, this is going to be your source of major resolve. You know, this is absolutely insane. Um, use that. I don't really think anything else needs to be said. This is your source of major resolve, so you're going to get your physical and spell resistance increased by 6k for 20 seconds. You know, fog. And then Temporal Guard, I just use this because you get the, main, the minor protection on your back bar, so it's going to reduce your damage taken by 5%. I don't use this ultimate, really. I just use Corrosive. I just use that for the minor protection. And then our champion points. Real quick, let's go over this. Our blue slotables are going to be Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, Ironclad, Duelist Rebuff. And then, as always, just increase, like, like, just get all the passes that you can, depending on how much CP you have. You know, it's definitely worth it. Uh, and our red tree is going to be Pain's Refuge. Fortified, Balance Vitality, and Celerity. Celerity is the only one I'm really going to talk about here. Uh, the reason why I can run two Infused on there is because of Celerity, getting that 10% movement speed. So between that and uh, Race Against Time and One Piece Swift, you are a speedy boy. Trust me. Or girl. I don't, I, I, look, I, I don't want to judge. I don't want to assume. And then our green tree, it's really not as important, but ration, definitely, actually, use rationer. Rationer is very important because for something like Clockwork Citrus, that food is expensive. 
So if you're going to run a DK like this, get Rationer and also get that provisioning uh, uh, well, passive, the one that increases the amount that your food lasts for. So get the two of those. And trust me, it might be expensive, but you're going to extend it as long as possible. Liquid efficiency is uh, huge as always. Gives the rider a eh. seeds blessing. Yeah, okay, sure, sure, whatever. And the only other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is use uh, Alliance Spell Droughts as your potions because on your front bar, you're not, or at all, you're not going to have any source of major sorcery. or uh, So that, uh, this is going to increase your spell damage by 20%, but you're also getting magic back. So I know that you can build into stamina for weapon damage and get your uh, weapon damage stuff higher nowadays, but I like going the magic route better just because of these. You can still use major sorcery. You can still get a potion that gives you that. And also, you're going to be um, uh, 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 you're going to be getting magic back too. So you know that's pretty pog. So I'm going to be switching to a console UI real quick because I'm just more comfortable on that. And I'm just going to show you how the stats look just with, um, just with the rallying cry proc. So you can see the critical resistance goes up to 3k basically just with that. And then also your spell damage is increased to um, 4176. And that's without even light attack. That's without being in combat. That's without... Here. Now with the potion up, we're at 5k basically. So on a mag DK, that's pretty, pretty, pretty huge. I really like it. And that's what the blue proc is, by the way, that uh, rallying cry. So I... I really like the way this build looks between the max magic, the max health, the max stamina. That's all going to be increased also by, um, by by your death dealers as well. So definitely please use that. It's definitely worth it. So um, that's about it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, um, please, uh, I, I would really appreciate you guys all liking the video. I haven't made a video in about two months now. So if you guys could really do that, it'll help me back into the algorithm. Uh, yeah, I would really, really appreciate it. Even if you guys just uh, want to comment something, I don't really care what you comment. If you just be like, hey, Sakar, you, you stink. I don't care. Just, just say something. It would help me out so much. I really do appreciate every single person that, 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 that types in the comments or likes the videos. It's really going to help me out. I took a long hiatus from making any kind of videos, so it really does help me out so much, and I really appreciate you guys coming back and, uh, you know, being patient with me i really needed a break and coming back fresher and stronger than ever really helps me a lot also if you want to see this build live in action i basically stream almost every day at twitch.tv forward slash shakar you know come leave a follow say what's up and uh, that's about it i'm not going to talk about uh any other builds i'm not going to talk about anything else right now i'm just gonna i feel like i talked your guys ear off so i'm gonna head out right now so guys i really appreciate you guys and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video later